Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again with another repair video. Behind me, a 1999 Honda Civic. Uh, it has a bad radiator, we diagnosed that in another video. Uh, in this video, we're just going to go through the step-by-step -step of how I go about replacing the radiator. And in this case, we're not even going to lift it up off the ground. We're not going to mess with anything underneath because we don't like to work that hard. Hopefully you're like me. If not, hey, knock yourself out. Anyway, rather than uh, making this an extremely long and unnecessary introduction, why don't we just get started uh, removing this uh, damaged radiator from this 1999 Honda Civic. Step one for me is going to be to uh, jam my coolant catch pan underneath the front bumper to try to catch any stray coolant that comes out. Next up, I'm going to remove the radiator cap. I'm going to keep it because my new uh, radiator does not come with a new cap, but be sure and inspect the uh, bottom part of it. Sometimes on Hondas, when they overheat, this whole thing will disintegrate, so if you don't see uh, this inner part to the radiator cap, it's time to replace it. I recommend original equipment caps, but aftermarket caps also work. Now, I'm going to remove the overflow tube and the overflow which should just pull up. There we go. And there may be some coolant that comes out of this, so you want to position this in such a way to where it's uh, not lower, because if it is, coolant will start to come out, but if it's positioned up high like this, you have less of a chance of that happening. I'm just going to rest it up here by the air cleaner. That way it's easy to grab when I when I need to get it. Okay, I'm now going to remove the upper radiator hose. Uh, we have to get these spring clamps back. I have this uh, thicker set of pliers for this. There's all kinds of tools available to uh, remove hose clamps. I'll post a link in the description to many of the tools that I use in this video uh, so you can check them out for yourself. Next, I'll just take a pair of channel locks, and we know our radiator is broken, so I'm not too worried about squeezing too hard, but if you're doing this and you're saving the radiator, be very careful with these plastic tanks, because if you squeeze too hard, you'll crack them. But I just put the channel locks on just a little bit, give it a slight twist, and that breaks the hose loose. They sort of corrode into place. This is a good time to replace the hoses. Honestly, the only one I really ever have issues with is the upper radiator hose. It's the one that gets the hot water. Um, the lower hose is, most, is the cool return coming back from the radiator most times, so it doesn't get a whole lot of heat stress like the upper hose does. But if you're going to replace them, go ahead and replace them both. There's really no harm in that at all. And this is why we had our catch pan down underneath. Now, I could have started draining everything out, but that would have uh, required me going up under, and I'm just, it's kind of cold today. I'm not really in the mood to climb up under here if I don't have to. Uh, so I'm just going to count on uh, things draining out as I work. You can do it any way you like. As I said in the beginning of the video, this is just how I do these. Now let's uh, get that lower radiator hose. Well, I kind of messed myself up by putting this uh, overflow directly in my path there, so I'm gonna have to move that. Uh, let's see, can you see this? If not, we'll make it so you can see. Right here is a heater hose that's sort of clamped on to the upper hose. I'm going to remove that clamp and set that aside. There's also one just beneath the distributor here that I need to get to, but the same, the same thing. I'm just going to pull the clamp back and remove the hose. Also, a uh, target of opportunity would be, if you're doing this work, maybe not a bad idea to think about doing the thermostat. It is right here, after all. Uh, once again, I recommend original equipment thermostats. However, if you're on a budget, you're on a budget. Okay. 
Now we are faced with one of our first real challenges, and that is uh, this has an automatic transmission. If you have a manual transmission, well, you can skip this step. Uh, but these are the cooler lines going into the transmission which are connected to the bottom of the radiator. Rather than trying to uh, disconnect them from the bottom of the radiator and messing with all that, I'm going to do that from up here. And once again, it is employing the same methods as with the radiator hoses. Looks like this one's got an inline filter. And now for my secret weapon, a pair of hose pliers, which allows me to uh, disconnect the hose right from the uh, right from the uh, line here, with without having to get down in there. But let's talk about one more thing quick here. What I'm going to do after I remove the hose, instead of letting the transmission fluid all leak out of there, is I have two things. I'm going to take the spark plug and put it in the rubber line. And I have this plug left over from another radiator, I, radiator that I had done previously that I'm going to put onto the metal line so that the uh, fluid doesn't leak out while I'm in the process of uh, replacing the radiator. So this is what we're doing. We are going to put this on the metal line, this on the rubber line to keep things from leaking out. Uh, another note, I've been asked in the past when replacing radiators about the fluid that is lost during the process of doing this, uh, whether or not you need to uh, top off the transmission fluid. I almost never do, but it's not going to hurt to check uh, because really, if you do it this way, and the, you're not going to lose a whole lot of fluid. So the less fluid you, you lose, the less you have to worry about that. But it's not going to hurt to check when you're done with the job just to be sure because obviously the new radiator is uh, going to have a big open cavity where there used to be transmission fluid. But I, I still believe that that's a negligible amount of fluid. You don't want to overfill your automatic transmission. That is in some ways worse than not having enough fluid. Let's see if these pliers work. Same twisting motion. There we go. Now we've at least got it loose, so it should. There we are. We can now install our spark plug. Just for an added measure of security with this, you can pull the hose clamp further up. I say this because of that right there, because I've done exactly that. I've, I've just pulled the spark plug right up out of there. And you don't want it falling out, making a mess everywhere, if you can avoid that. There we go. Now we'll take that plastic plug and put it down on the line. Because when you get one side off, the other side will, as soon as you take the other side off, the, this side will start to leak because the air will be able to enter in. Same drill over here. Plug. There we go. Believe it or not, that was the hard part. And lastly, we have the electrical connection for the cooling fan itself. Just squeeze in on the top and you can disconnect it. And I believe that's everything. We're ready to get this out of here. I know, it's almost over. Holding it in is just the uh, one 10, mm 10 millimeter fastener here on the top. Remove the clamp, and we should be able to lift the whole thing out. Now, watch, watch the hoses as you're doing this, because uh, they may get tangled up in stuff. You don't want them to get tangled up in anything, and you can just lift the whole thing out. Okay, here goes. There you have it. It's not very big. Doesn't need to be, I guess. And now that it's out, I'm gonna drain it. But instead of using the drain, I'm just 
going to tip it upside down and just dump, dump whatever's in it out like this. I just want to get enough of it out so that I can work with it. Because as you saw when I removed it, it uh, got a little messy. In addition to that, there are two rubber grommets here in the bottom. I'm going to take off now. That way I don't forget them. You'll need these. These are the lower mounts for the radiator. I'm going to put those down in there now so I don't forget. Okay, these fit down into here with the smaller hole facing up. Looks like we've got a piece of wood or something here. This might be the reason why we're here in the first place. Also, check for any debris that might have been in front of it. Uh, get rid of that now that you uh, have the opportunity to do so. Anything that obstructs airflow through the radiator will make it less efficient. But now let's swap the stuff over uh, to our new radiator and get it ready to go in. All right, I found it easy to do all this swapping over here on the bench. Uh, my new radiator is an aftermarket radiator. It does come with a new radiator cap. So I was mistaken about that earlier. So we'll use that since it is new. Uh, there are some plugs here to remove. If you were installing this, m most of these radiators come universal. So they all come with ports for an automatic transmission cooler, even if you have a manual transmission. If that's the case, just leave these alone. Just don't even bother taking them off. But since we do have an automatic transmission, we are going to need to remove ours so that we can install the, uh, the ends for the lines. I think it goes without saying there's some rust here. So I am going to employ a little bit of penetrating oil on the bottom of each of these uh, fasteners. Now, if it doesn't work out, which sometimes it does not work out, that's okay. Uh, this comes with new nuts that go in here. We just get new fasteners and we go about our merry way. But uh, if I can, I try to uh, get the old fasteners out and we'll just have to see if it works for us. And to give us every advantage, penetrating oil is our friend. Do the same to these top ones. Okay, since we are going to have to put these ends onto the radiator here, I'm going to just start with that while the penetrating oil soaks in. Something else to uh, note is anytime you get a new radiator, uh, original equipment or not, check the petcock. Make sure it's tight. I, I say this because I've run into this issue before uh, to where I just put the radiator in and this was loose and it started leaking shortly afterwards. So save yourself the trouble and just check to make sure that's tight before you uh, commit. Check the angle on your, I don't know what to call these, uh, line ends, whatever, inputs. They both look the same to me as far as the angle is concerned. So I'm just going to leave that be. But then compare it to what you have over on your old radiator because you want these to be in a similar orientation. So if, if they're angled over like this, that's the way you want them or this way or what have you. Because you'll, you'll have that control once you get them into place. These look like they're just straight. And what I'll do is since I'm tightening them, I will turn them a little bit farther away so that as I tighten, they end up in the correct position. Because they, contents will shift during transit. Rather than playing a guessing game of trying to figure out what size that is, I'm just gonna use this adjustable. As long as it's snug, it doesn't matter. This is a new part. Um, as far as any sealer or thread tape, I don't, I don't believe you need it. This is a compression fitting. So I, I, don't, I don't think it's necessary to do any more than that. There it is, done. Once again, done. Like I said, it's a compression fitting. It should be fine. So just try to get your angle right. This one is a little bit over. I'm happy. Now I will transfer the hoses over. Now if you're going to add a hose clamp to anything, I would do it to the bottom hose. Uh, this one on here is fairly rusty uh, down at the bottom. So I'm actually going to opt to replace it. I have one here that I'm going to use. I say this because these spring clamps will get you, especially if they're old and rusty like this. They, uh, they will not hesitate to wreck your day. And 
it's down low where you'd have to remove a bunch of shielding and everything to get to it. Uh, it's just the kind of thing you don't want to deal with uh, after doing a job like this. So you're better off replacing at the very least the lower hose clamp. If one of the upper ones goes, so what? It's right there. It's easy to get to. This one, not so much. You know, come to think of it, given that this is going to be in the way of this fan, I'm just going to take this off for now and set it aside. I'm going to do the same with these hoses. Just going to remove them and set them aside for now. Love these. I've got a set of three for three different sizes. Lifesavers. You know what? I don't think this matters. I'm just going to stick these on, but do this so they're not in my face. Now to get these fasteners loose. Wish me luck. If I get these loose, I'll be home free. But they're very rusty and have grown quite large. So when I, when I put the socket on there, I want to make sure that it's bottomed out as far as it goes. And I also am using an impact. Um, so that's helpful. Just trying to do it to twist these off with a ratchet, it's not going to be as successful as with an impact. Whenever you've got rusty fasteners like this, an impact is your best friend. Push down hard. So what if it broke? Doesn't matter. Came out. Here's another little tip for you. This is stuck in my socket right now and I want to get it out. I'll just take this and put this on an anvil and hit it with a hammer. That's all it usually takes. Can we be lucky a second time? Not quite, but it's not all lost yet. I'm going to go get a 3 8 socket and hammer it on here. Sometimes just putting a smaller socket on is all it takes. And don't yell at me for using a chrome socket here because I don't have a 3 8 impact socket. Doesn't matter. Came out. We're free there. Hopefully we'll get lucky here. That one came out. Many aftermarket radiators don't come with the nuts installed into these little slots. Uh, you can just see where they just sort of fit in here. Uh, if, if they look like they have one side that uh, looks a little chamfered like this one is, put that towards uh, the fastener side. Uh, you do that because that'll help the fastener start easier. Uh, both of these sides appear to be that way. And be careful once you're in this spot because they uh, can go anywhere. So until you start threading the fastener in, they may have a tendency to uh, want to leave the building. So be, be careful of that. And now it's simply a matter of that hose does not want to stay. Thankfully, everything lines up. Sometimes <laughs> it doesn't. And when it doesn't, man, that's disappointing. These are some older fasteners. I raided my magic bolt bin for uh, some new fasteners to use that aren't as crusty. And I'm just going to get them started. I'm not going to tighten these down because I want to make sure that I get all the fasteners started before I tighten everything down. It might, I might need to shift or move it around to get it to, to go together. A couple of other new fasteners. These don't have the washers, unfortunately, but I believe they will work. Now, luckily, my gun has a variable speed on it. Um, 
Actually, I'm not going to use the gun because this is plastic. Uh, I've got experience doing this, but I don't want to show it. I'm just going to go get a ratchet and run these down with a ratchet. This way we can avoid breaking our new radiator. I'm just going to use a quarter inch ratchet for this. You don't need to tighten these too tight. I mean, it is plastic after all. Let's uh, run our hose clamps down. Now think about the position of these things when it's back inside the vehicle. So they'll be pointed up like this. If you put them another way, then you might have to work them around once they're in the car. Sorry about that. It's much easier to do that, to do this now rather than when it's in the car. So just try to position these to where they're pointed in a good direction. All right, we already talked about this hose clamp and that we are ditching it in favor of this guy. Now, just in case you have to disconnect this uh, radiator hose sometime while it's in the vehicle, think about that. Don't leave it up here or point it in such a way to where you can't get to it. I'm gonna leave it so it's pointed down uh, so that uh, if I ever have to go back and undo it, I'll be able to do so easily. Or relatively so, or as easily as possible. I'm thinking that was at about that angle. There we go. Once again, this is plastic, people. You don't need to... Notice I'm just using a nut driver here. Yeah, there's a lot left over, but that was the size clamp that I had. Looks like we're ready to go back inside the vehicle. Installation is pretty much the reverse of what we just did. What we're trying to do is get these little pegs down in those little rubber things that uh, I showed you uh, earlier when we removed this. Uh, also, once again, being careful not to uh, damage or get the lines tangled up and stuff. But just drive it down in there, get these down in the holes, and you're good. As you saw, those rubber grommets may require a little bit of guidance, but try to make sure they don't roll over or anything like that, because if they do, the radiator won't sit in there properly, uh, and it will be really difficult to, to mount into place. But when it's home, you know, there's no, it, it, it doesn't feel bound up. It feels like it's home where it's supposed to be. Think Happy Gilmore. I'm gonna go ahead and reattach the upper clamp It's been something of a long-standing policy of mine to start with the hardest thing and work my way to easy. So I'm going to start with these transmission lines, which in my humble opinion are, are part of one of the most difficult parts of this operation. Take my spark plug and my cap and reinstall. Sorry if I'm in your way on this one. Same drill over here. Let's get that uh, lower hose back connected. All right, just gonna fish this down under the heater hose. Hook its clamp back up behind this air cleaner assembly. Got this little guy that held the heater hose. That's one of those things where you might ask yourself, hey, it's just a little piece of plastic, why should I put it there? Every time I think of that, my response is always, if that costs two cents for the manufacturer to make, then they could have saved two cents over a million units. If it wasn't necessary, do you think they wouldn't have put it there? So, I mean, even the most insignificant things, the manufacturer spent a lot of time saying, hey, we need this. So try to put even the little things like that back. It could save you trouble down the road. Here we have the electrical connection for our fan. 
do not want to forget that. And lastly, we have that upper radiator hose. Well, almost lastly, we still have the overflow. Whenever I put these hose clamps back, I try to put them back in the same place they were when I took them off. This way, the hose, or this, this way it clamps right where the old hose was. Now, if you're replacing hoses, so what? But um, it just, it, they clamp better if you put them back to where they were when they started. Slider overflow back into place. There's this little slotted piece here that fits down into this uh, piece of metal that sticks up like this. It just slides right into place. Reattach the hose. Now it's time to fill it up and bleed the system. And to do that, I'm gonna use one of my favorite tools, my spill-free funnel. Makes life so much easier. Once again, there'll be links in the description for stuff. Now, some of, these, some of the older Civics have a bleeder valve. This one does not. Uh, so don't worry about it, just pour slow. The bleeder valve is there to help fill the system. I'll also post a link in the description about uh, my bleeding a cooling system video. I'm pretty much going to run through the basics here, but I think you get the general gist. As far as the antifreeze I'm using, it's a 50-50 mix. Uh, this, this year's Civic didn't get the blue coolant, it still gets green. So we'll be just fine with that. In fact, we're already ready to start her up. Okay, now I'm gonna back this up uh, so that I can get at least the exhaust pipe out the back door so that I'm not filling the shop with uh, noxious fumes uh, while I bleed the cooling system. Wanna come with? All right, that all worked out good. Now, you'll notice the coolant here on the top. Sometimes when you're using that spill-free funnel on some aftermarket radiators, it won't seal properly and it will leak out here. Uh, you, I'm just gonna hit it with a little compressed air to try and get some of this out of here, uh, but really there's not much you can do. I, I still use the funnel even though it leaks a little bit, but you may run into this issue. Uh, if you do, just do the best you can. All right, well that wraps it up. Uh, radiator replacement, 1999 Honda Civic. Not that difficult. Uh, you can do it all from the top. I recommend you do it that way, unless you like rolling around in the cold ground. Well, today it's cold, it's not always cold, but you know what I'm getting at. Uh, cooling fan works. Uh, as far as bleeding the cooling system, I do have a separate video on that. Link in the description, as I've said, along with a bunch of stuff. So if you have questions, you might wanna check that description before you ask them. It might. Uh, you might find your answers there. When all is said and done, I know I had those issues with the spill-free funnel and the seal uh, causing a little bit of coolant to leak out, but once you get that cleared up, you wanna check it for leaks. So get the radiator cap on, maybe take it for a nice drive, come back, check for leaks, particularly for the uh, automatic transmission. You also might wanna check the automatic transmission fluid level. In addition, uh, top off the overflow. Uh, that's something that, that I also did and that, wraps the job up nicely. Uh, and also check for other leaks, uh, just to make sure that this issue wasn't caused by something else. You never know, trust me, you never know. Other than that, I, I hope this video was useful to you. Uh, I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at ericthecarguy.com. You can also find a ton of answers to your automotive questions over at ericthecarguy.com, which is where I ask that you go, should you have those automotive questions or automotive issues. Uh, we have a welcome video there outlining all the uh, fabulous things that we've created there to help you with those automotive issues. It's the place to go. It really is. If you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter, and I close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. I'll see you next time.